Uh, now, next and anti-penultimately, it's our winner all the way from Malaysia, a country making their first appearance at FameLab International because they've just held their first FameLab. Uh, that winner is Amin Kamal, who's in charge of technology development at Malaysian biorefinery project MY Biomass. Uh, a biotechnology graduate from the University of New South Wales. Uh, Amin's a scuba diver, nature lover, and truth seeker who says he sees science as a universal tool of peace and prosperity. But can he use that universal tool to unlock a place in tomorrow's final? Here from Malaysia and ready to amaze you, it's Amin Kamal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is serious. We extract 4 billion tons of oil every year. We've been doing it for nearly 300 years. We don't know how much of it we have left. And worst of all, it might not even matter because long before we finish using it all up, we would have destroyed the planet through water and air pollution, through climate change and global warming, through economic crisis and political instability. That is the future for your children and grandchildren if we keep relying on fossil fuel. So the question is, how do we make fuels, chemicals, and electricity without using oil and gas? But wait a second. Fossil fuels are made from previously living organic things, like plants and animals. And almost all living things are made from basically the same building block, which we know as carbon. And there lies the answer. You see, unlike oil refineries, biorefineries can use organic waste, waste that we produce a lot every day. We don't have to wait a million years like oil and gas. This is renewable and therefore sustainable. And that is an amazing concept by itself. But what's really amazing is how the biorefinery can get to those building blocks and make something out of it. Well, allow me to illustrate. In the US, they harvest millions of corn every year, right? Leaving behind a lot of corn waste. From here, the biorefinery first uses mechanical technologies to break this like you chewing on your food. And what happens then is like what happens in your stomach. It uses enzymes and acids to break this down further. And now we have the building blocks. From here is where the magic happens. Billions of tiny living microorganisms, think of it as billions of workaholic dwarfs, use these broken down molecules like bricks to build fuels chemicals and living behind materials that can produce energy. Kind of like an oil refinery, but greener. In fact, some biorefineries can have up to 90% less greenhouse gas emission. So that is revolutionary. This is a way we can still produce what we need without sacrificing the environment or slowing down growth and development. Because we did not inherit this world from our ancestors, we borrowed it from our children. So let me ask you, do you want sustainable development and a cleaner future for your children and grandchildren? Then I will say to you, don't keep calm. Like, don't keep calm and start making biorefineries. Thank you very much. If you want to clean the future, you might want to start, <laughs> might want to start there. Apologize for that. I also have to say, billions of workaholic dwarfs is one of those phrases I'm going to add to things that you will only ever hear in FameLab. <laughs> Judges. <laughs> um, if it's so fantastic, then why hasn't it been more widely adopted? Why, why, why haven't we got biorefineries all over the place now? Thank you very much. That's a very good question. So, <laughs> 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 but there's a, there's a real serious answer to this. I categorize the problem. There's so many problems, but there are three general big problems. First is the technology, technical risk. Second is the economic risk. And third would be the political risk. Technology, first for technology is that a lot of these technology providers have only reached commercial scale. There's not many out there yet, all right? Second with the technical risk is that it's not easy to collect all this waste from all over the place. Like oil and gas, the earth have already a, a contributed energy and heat, so it's done half of the work. Where else, in this case, we have to collect from all over the place. So there's a logistical issue there, which brings to the second issue, which is the economic issue. It takes a lot of cost to do this, and the Earth have given their energy and time, but in my process, the one that I just mentioned, you're adding more cost up front. So the feedstock has to be really cheap for it to compete with conventional pathways. And third is the political will. The, 
there's a lot of this going on, especially in the United States, but we really need this to be happening more. So that's, those are the three main problems, why it's not there yet. Given those issues then, yeah. do you think that this is the answer to climate change? Uh, I think it's part of a bigger answer because there is a mass balance issue here. It will not be able to make a lot of all the three, chemicals, electricity, and fuel. It will make a ratio of all this. So for me, maybe a combination of energy, let's say from uh, nuclear or solar, and they focus on fuels and chemicals. For me, that may seem like a perfect combination, but there's a lot of cost involved, which is why some companies rather just use oil and gas, which is cheaper and more uh, condensed. There isn't the risk, bio-refineries uh, have, have risks of, uh, of themselves, and one of them is to the dest destruction of uh, forests, for instance, or uh, other uh, environments to, right. to produce uh, that kind of energy. So, in okay. so as you can see from my uh, uh, example just now, we're not planting more uh, agricultural plants to make those materials, we're using waste. So it's not like we're planting new things. For example, in, in corn, you've already planted corn places. You're already using the waste that's already there, without which it's just wasted material. We're adding value to something that's left on the plantation. And in Malaysia, for example, you already have lots of palm plantations. And you can use the palm waste to do this because it's already there. So it's adding value and without adding the need to... So using only the waste. Only the waste, exactly, yep which he's about to use in a minute. One more time. Buy a refined but out of time, Amin Kamal. Thank you.